All right, guys, how's it going? This is Dan here with Grapevine Recording once again, and welcome to this video. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of a detour from the other videos that we've been doing. Um, we spent a lot of time looking at some of the very, very basics of, of compression and EQ, and um, I, I've been, I actually got asked this by one of my friends, and I thought it would be a pretty good uh, video to show off, as I know especially people who work within Pro Tools have kind of had a little bit of a problem with this, and that's the fact that there's no uh, offline bouncing. And what that means is that if you use a program like Logic or Cubase, what you could do is say where we've got a, um, our plugins on this channel as inserts. Uh, as we know, all of these plugins take up a certain amount of CPU space. And... Uh, to be fair, we're, we're quite lucky nowadays with the new AAX format. Is It's really low load on the, on the computer anyway, so it's not that bad. But especially when you go into big sessions, you know, a lot of a lot of this, as we can see up here in the top corner in system usage, this CPU can just go through the roof and then that's when you start getting dropouts and, you know, all kinds of problems that way. And that's not what we want. So what you can do on them other systems is you can bounce it. And what that means is it re-renders the audio, but with these plugins into like on the audio itself. And Pro Tools is a real-time system, which means if you want to do that, you what you have to do, like it's definitely possible to do it. You just create a new track, so create an audio track here, and we'll do it on the guitar. So we'll call this, for example, guitar bounce. And what we do is we take the output, so obviously it's going to my main mix at the moment, but we output it into, where is it, sorry, we go into a bus, and we go bus 17. And then the input of this will be, you guessed it, bus 17. And then what we can do is just arm that for record, make sure nothing else is in record, and then go... Like that and then we go all the way through the track let it play in one go and then this has my compressor my EQ and my analog channel which is a uh, kind of like a tape emulation plugin uh, that'll have that on that track obviously we can we can do this for all of them in one go if we set up a load of tracks but there's another way that you can do it and this is the way that I prefer to work, just because it's a little bit quicker. Uh, it doesn't work on some plugins, bear it, like we need to bear in mind, but on others it does. Um, and what it is, is we use the audio suite, and there's a big difference between our task plugins, which is real-time audio suite, which is what all these plugins are, which when we go into it, you know, all of these are all our task plugins or AAX plugins, and they just... Uh, act as inserts on the channel or you get audio suite and what audio suite is it's like you print that effect to that channel so it's it's good and bad because one you know you've got to live or die by that decision but of course you can just duplicate the audio and then add it to that track and if it doesn't work you've still got the you know the vanilla audio as it were but what i like to do say for example this is my setting for my channel strip on this guitar so i've got a bit of eq i've got a gate I have a compressor, and it's all working the way I want it to work. So what I'd do, I'd save, I'd come up to here on preset at the top, you go save as, and I would call it by my side, oh, that's not how you spell it, by my side, oh my dear, guitar. Right, so I go save that preset, and this is the preset for that. Then, because the R channel is an, R, uh, is an audio suite plugin, I go up here to our channel in mono. It opens it up, and then I go, I want to use the By My Side guitar preset over here. And then what I can choose to do, obviously you can still make tweaks and things like that. You can either choose it to create on a new playlist, and I'll go into a playlist on another video, but... Um, 
and then you just go render, and that renders it at two times the speed. Oh, sorry, I need to choose to do it on that bit of audio, and then go boop. And we wait for it to be done, and there we go. Now I can take off that the R channel. Oh, sorry, it's still going to bus 17. I was wondering why that weren't working. Right. And now that's that effect printed. So any CPU power that was getting taken up by the R channel is now gone. And then what you can do, say, for example, this tape emulation, I wanted to put that on it as well. And you've got to um, try and imagine that I've got loads of these plugins running at the same time and, you know, it's starting to get bogged down. Again, all you do, save settings as, then you just put... Guitar uh, saturation. Save it as that. To be fair, I'm not entirely sure whether the DSP stuff is that. It is indeed. So we open that again. Select that. Go to my guitar saturation effect. Render. And there we go. Now we can turn that off. And there's them plugins printed to that audio and what you'll remember that wasn't in real time so a good mode of practice would of course be to make a duplicate of this audio you know like the very pure audio that we got when we first recorded it because if we do anything wrong with audio suite it's really hard to actually remove any processing that you put on but as you can see you know we we done that there how long did that take less than five minutes you can spend a little bit of time then of, you know, creating it for every single track. You know, if you've got another channel strip, a bit of EQ and more saturation on your vocals and you want to do that. And it just makes it easier and it kind of frees up your system to add more plugins later if you, especially if you're running, you know, some piano software and things. But I think with the piano software, it works really well because it's in MIDI and all we do is do that routing that we've done before where we create a new track. So... Obviously, the piano is in stereo, so we want to create a stereo audio track. Bring that all the way up here. I'll put this. Oh, let me rename it. So, piano bounce. Actually, spelled that right for a change. Then you'd output that to a bus. Let's say bus 17 again. Input. Oh, I'm being really silly. I forgot that's a stereo track. So we need to put it to two buses, so 17 and 18. Set it to record. Choose a part where you're happy to record from, so say obviously the beginning, and then go. It'd help if I never had it in solo. Let's do that again. And there we go, there's the piano that we've just, that was previously in MIDI. As audio, because a lot of people do prefer to chop up things in audio instead of with MIDI. And to be fair, Pro Tools as MIDI isn't super, super effective. It works a hell of a lot better with audio. So that's pretty much it. There's a way that you can use, that you can bounce all your presets to your audio. And we even learned a way that we can do it, not in real time. So uh, hopefully that answers a lot of questions. Hopefully you can find that useful. I know I do. And uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next part. You all take it easy.